Shalom everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Torah Gems. I'm Rob, your host. Uh, this week we're going to be speaking on the portion Be Shalach and He Sent. Uh, this week we have uh, readings out of Exodus, uh, we have readings out of Judges, and we have a reading out of Mark this week. Uh, specifically this week we're going to be speaking out of a tract of scripture which uh, gave uh, some significant revelations. Um, we, we see that uh, what's happened is we've established here uh, last week that the same law shall apply to the native as to the stranger who, uh, who sojourns among you. Isn't that interesting that God is taking the gear to a shop and um, making them part and parcel with, with Israel because that's going to be very significant when uh, the children of Israel reach uh, Mount Sinai. Um, we see that uh, Pharaoh is, is, is pursuing Israel. Um, they take up mikvah. They pass through the, um, the Red Sea. Okay, The Red Sea is rolled apart. Not unlike a Torah scroll, praise God. One, one on one side, one on the other. And they pass through it. And this is a type and picture today. Uh, the Red Sea crossing is a picture of what we do um, through Yeshua HaMashiach. Um, how we find our identity. How... Um, we are immersed with Yeshua, and it shows through death and to life, okay? It's a type and picture of a lot of different things. This week, um, we're reading from uh, chapter 15, and we read in verse 25 and 26, Then he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, and he threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. There he made for them a statute and a regulation, and there he tested them. And he said, If you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes. I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. Well, that's interesting, because God here is talking about commandments, statutes, and judgments, and the children of Israel haven't reached Sinai yet. Uh, you see, after the Red Sea crossing, we see um, significant um, events start to take place, okay? And what is significant is the repeated grumbling. If you notice through this week's passage, we see repeated grumbling on the children of Israel, okay? God is telling us today that for com to complete the journey, we need the Torah. And not the just the Torah itself, for itself, but the incarnate Torah, Yeshua HaMashiach. Without Yeshua, without the spirit of Yeshua to lift the Torah, we cannot walk in life. We are walking in legalism. We're walking, walking in our own strength. And it shows the futility of walking in their own strength. The constant grumbling. I mean, these people would see that the, the, the salvation that is the Lord's. It's interesting that we see that uh, it's mentioned in here that God has become their salvation. I thought salvation was a New Testament idea. Praise God. You know, um, and, you know, of course, we do believe that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. We believe he died on the cross for our sins and we're saved, okay? Hebrews talks of a better way. Here we see Moses and uh, compared to Yeshua here. And oftentimes, detractors from the Torah of Moses would say that, oh, well, that means we don't have to keep the law anymore. No, it's it's what it's talking about is, is that Yeshua is the better way. Yeshua causes the Torah to stand. I'm going to get to that later here. Okay, so... The point, you know, God is leading them and would end up at Mount Sinai, okay? Um, his point would be, you know what you need to do, but you're not capable of doing it on your own strength. And God does that, and he uses that place of preparation, preparation, the wilderness place, to, to show them that. And isn't that what God's doing today? We're not in Torah because we wanted to. We're not in Torah because we're interested in knowing more about our Old Testament as part of a Bible study. We're in Torah because the very Spirit of God is in this thing. That He is causing us to walk out the commandments, statutes, and judgments of God. Uh, and, you know, the logic is, we come to our Abrahamic covenant. I believe in Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for my sins and I am saved. The next stop is the Mosaic covenant. That's that boom. That's that wall. That's that dividing wall. It's not the dividing wall, don't get me wrong, but it is a dividing wall because for hundreds and hundreds of years now, uh, the Christian church has been under the impression that, praise God, I'm not under the law. You know, seed sown with, with people with an agenda. Like, you, you know, 
a long time ago. And it's still sown today with people with an agenda too. But we're not going into that. What I'm saying is, is that that logical progression, that logical progressive revelation, you know, you can see revival after revival after revival. People repent and they start to do the things of the Torah just by their very nature because Jeremiah 31, 31 to 33 says that he's going to write the Torah on our heart and mind. So people start to do the things of the Torah. They take care of the widows of the orphans. They deal with the homeless. They start being a blessing in their communities. But the root of the dispensationalist uh, agenda will always lead one away from the commandments, statutes, and judgments of God because that is what the slanderer always wanted from the beginning. So we see here, oftentimes, I have been approached, you know, I got a, some seat seats on and, you know, and I'll, I'll go to a group of you know, assembly and, you know, worship with them on a, on a Sunday. Uh, you know, not to, to observe Sunday as Sabbath, of course not, but just to, to see what, what the people of God are doing and, and to enjoy some worship time with them. And, um, and, and you know, here we, we don't have an assembly that we go to because there isn't one. Uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> praise God. But what happens is, uh, actually, let me correct myself. There is an assembly. It happens to Shabbat every, every, every week at my house with my family. It starts here in the home. But anyway, I'm getting onward. Um, People come up and they say, oh, what, you know, are you Jewish? And I say, well, what do you mean by Jewish? You know, no, I'm not Jewish. I'm, I'm an Israelite, you know, and praise God by adoption through Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ. They say, oh, yeah. So what are you into? What does this mean? You know, and they want to know. They want to know what, what group are you with? What are you doing? What's, what's your agenda? You know, I don't have any agenda. Well, I want to infect you with the teaching and instruction of God. Praise God. <laughs> it's going to be life for you. Anyway, uh, you get a little... You know, a little excited here today, but they say almost all the time, and oddly enough, they say, "What is it?" <laughs> I think Beishalak, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> I know Beishalak. Yeah. Here, I should carry one around in my wallet, like a little card one with a little, and <laughs> because this is the section that it talks about the people, the children of Israel receiving manna, food from heaven. They ask, "What is it?" And I go, "Isn't that exactly your question?" Answers itself, brother or sister. Because what is it? And I and I often ask, well, do you know what ha what the definition of what is it in in Hebrew for in 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 the in, in Exodus? And they said, what? I said, well, that's what they called manna that fell from heaven. And this is what is it? It's manna from heaven. Praise God, the Hebraic roots of our faith. Um, so you see, they took a mikvah through the Red Sea or the Sea of Reeds. Sea of Reeds, eh? Interesting. And then they, it's rolled back, and they go through it. Can't get from point A to point B without going through it. Through what? The teaching and instruction of God. Not done away with. Absolutely not. That's a lie from the pit of hell designed to steal your identity and your inheritance. Identity and inheritance. Stolen, taken away. Sorry, no more identity and inheritance. We make up our own rules. Now we're the church. We replace Israel. What a load of hooey. Um, okay, so we see that picture when Moses has got the Torah in his hands and they're fighting the Amalekites and Moses cannot hold the Torah up on his own. There's two witnesses, one on either side, holding up the Torah. Two witnesses. Two witnesses. We see a lot of pictures in Scripture of two witnesses, but if we've divorced ourselves from the Hebraic roots of our faith and we're not following after the commandments, statutes, and judgments of God and we're doing what's right in our own eyes and we're not focused in on the complete word Genesis to Revelation because my friends Torah is teaching Torah is not legalism and all of it is teaching okay Genesis to Revelation but I mean our classic sense of Torah is Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers and Deuteronomy so you know, Joshua is saying Joshua is saying make that stand is Yeshua not saying make this stand in these end days is he not causing it to stand up is he not causing us to walk out of standards and commandments statutes and judgments by the very spirit deposited in us praise God this week all right so we see that we need that to cause it to stand he's showing us this week that we cannot walk out the Torah with that mindset that we need a renewed heart that we need him we need him and him alone to cause the Torah to stand Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Have a blessed week. Shalom, everyone. Have a blessed week. Hear, O Israel, all you chosen ones, the Lord our God, the Lord is one.